Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming, and some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Drag the Dam, coming back at you to the Let's Play episode of Echo Flynn's Path. So, y'all, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. Alright. <clears throat> this one is an archival notice attached to the front. That's pretty surprising on account that it's a residential lot. Opening the folder, a photo placed in front of all the documents immediately catches my attention. Oh. Um. Wow. A part of my mind immediately flashes back to Leo, but even he wasn't anywhere close to being this defined. I guess life in the early 20th century will do that to you. I should probably read the caption note for this for this that, that was attached. Sheriff William Adler rests after rests after surviving the partial collapse of the Hendricks Castle. The Hendricks Castle? Below the note are some rather old rudimentary building plans crumbling at the edges. The penmanship is all weird cursive and I can't read it. It does look a little like Carl's house, but much, much larger. What follows are a series of deed transfers from various members of the Hendrix family, and eventually more modern building plans. There's even a cutout from a magazine, Southwestern Modern, which shows off the kitchen space back when it was first redesigned. I notice something wedged in the back, a beige piece of paper that doesn't look anything else doesn't look like anything else in here. Nope. A poem? Why would this be in here? Embrace of these lands, Boyk. As black takes the sky, hot turns to cold, the safety of ignorance from the specters of the day. Shut their eyes, they wail, for the dark blanket, and to save them from a hell. And the blonde tarantula pulls itself from the depths, wrought within and without, in search of a suitor who will not lift past the vehemence of its love. I flip over the poem and set it down on the counter. On the other side is a notice of death for reference in an estate transfer. It's for a James Hendrix who passed away in 1913. The cause of death is listed as poison infection. Uh, Theraf... Theraphos... Tarantula. Oh, okay. This is pretty unsettling. I didn't think tarantulas were poisonous. I mean, I know they aren't because I fear searched that information online one night after seeing one on my back porch at 3 a.m. I guess that poem was some sort of informal epitaph for the guy. Regardless, it's a shitty way to die. I slide the poem Death Notice back into the folder and make note, make note of it for the project. I think that's all for this parcel, so I place the folder back in its slot on the south wall. As I turn around, I see the mayor standing in the doorway. She's peering at me quizzically. A little startled, I straighten up. Oh, uh, hi, mayor. I was just finishing up. She's watching me speak, like staring at my mouth, and not my eyes. It's honestly freaking me out a little. She doesn't respond. Uh, mayor? Make sure you put everything back where you found it. Oh, yeah, don't worry. I did that already. Did you now? She steps in the room, and it picks up a folder from the edge of the counter. I recognize it as one for the abandoned mines. <sighs> oh, God, yeah, I, I forgot that one, sorry. She stands there with the folder held out, waiting for me. I quickly move and take the folder. I try to ignore the, the hard stare I feel in my back as I walk to the archive wall. A far left end, second cubby from the top. Oh, uh, thank you, I didn't... Mm-hmm, it looks like Flynn's about ready to take off. You gonna give him some company? The way she phrases that makes me reconsider a hasty response. Sure, I can hang out with him and his roommate. You have a boy in your car. I blink. I have a Carl in my car, yes. He wanted to hang he wanted to hang back while I did all the work. <laughs> I feign a chuckle, though not very well. I've never been good at that whole smiling with your eyes thing. Carl Hendricks? Yes. Have a good rest of your evening, Chase. Thank you, Mayor. You too. She moves down she moves she moves on down the hall. After a moment I follow suit to meet up with Flynn at the front desk. That was weird. Dude, that's skeevy! After that, she just walked back to her office and shut the door, like almost slamming it. Maybe she's not a fan of you queer types. Carl puts on a southern drawl for that last bit. I step out of the car and pop the trunk, moving to gather up my equipment. The sun is starting to get pretty low at this point. There's not really any tall mountains to the east, so Echo's sunsets tend to last a while. Maybe, but she seemed alright with Flynn. Carl follows suit, though his eyes are still glued to his phone. I can't get over that whole there's a boy in your car bit. <laughs> yeah, she seemed kind of, I don't know, weirded out with me or something. But she wasn't like that when we met. She was pretty cordial then. As I shut the trunk, I spy Flynn's truck parked behind the house, as well as what looks like a faded yellow moped. One second, y'all. It is water time. I'm assuming that that one is his roommate's. Huh. The ram shrugs. You are kind of weird. Maybe you did that staring thing you do sometimes. I blink. The what? Never mind, man. I frown. Carl looks up from his phone long enough to catch my expression. I'm just kidding, just making fun of Flynn's whole dressing you down back at the river. Carl smirks. His eyes are no longer glazed over, and it actually feels like he's looking at me rather than a thousand miles away. 
We make our way up to the front door, Carl tapping away at his screen. Hard to imagine my house was even bigger back in the day, though. My parents already have more, have more rooms than they know what to do with. Like, we've got three spare bedrooms, right? But we never have any guests or anything, so they don't get used, get used and just gather dust and stuff. Do your parents make you clean them? Carl rolls his shoulders, idly wiping his hooves upon the rough palm fiber, fiber floor welcome mat. Sometimes. Knowing Carl, that means pretty much never. Once inside, the familiar hot, stuffy climate hits like a wool blanket thrown around me. What sounds like some sort of lo-fi hip-hop is playing in the background from what I assume is Daxton's room. The interior is dimly lit with the exception of a bright white light coming from, a f coming from the ajar fridge. Daxton stands next to it, holding a block of pale cheese. Is this what you need? The salamander seems to be peering at, it as ex at us expectantly. Um, no? He raises a brow ridge, craning his neck to look past us. Uh, talking to Flynn. The gila's large self the gila's large self steps out of the laundry room beside us, looking at looking to Daxon. Oh, sorry. Carl gives us a sidelong gives me a sidelong smirk. That's the provolone. The recipe needs a Vardy. Flynn steps past us without much acknowledgement, moving to the kitchen besides Daxton. Uh, we have a block of Havarti, but it's in the freezer. There's this thing called a defrost sitting on the microwave. Yeah, but you let the fish you caught you caught all on top of it. The pack is sealed, that shouldn't matter. The whole freezer kind of reeks. Like I said, the package is sealed. That shouldn't matter. With a shrug to Carl, I move in and set my equipment down next to the kitchen stand, kitchen island. I take a seat on one of the wicker top bar stools. Carl lingers in the entryway a bit before moving to sit on the stool next to mine. Flynn wordlessly goes to the fridge and grabs two bottles of light beer, popping the tops and setting them down in front of us. Thanks. I'm not 20 up one yet legally, you know. Flynn shrugs uncaringly before getting a beer for himself. Looking around, the countertops are pretty free of clutter beyond some. Basic community college letters and a heavily used black notebook. The notebook is labeled World Building and Fictional History 204. A few water stains have shriveled the edges of the pages. Daxton places the provolone back into the fridge and places the allegedly fishy Havarti on a plastic cutting board. Meanwhile, Flynn is now at the sink, washing vegetables. Daxton grabs a small knife and finally glances back at me. Welcome back, Chase! I wave a bit, limp-wristedly. Hey! He smiles, then shifts his gaze to Carl. The ram looks up from his phone a little apprehensively. And um, hey, uh, I've seen you before, but I forgot your names. Sam, Sam something? Carl, he answers, his voice quiet. Oh, well, good to meet you. Uh, usually you're kind of in and out of here real quick, like when you do come by. Carl shrugs. Yeah, same. The ram's gaze looks back to his phone, Carl typing something. Daxon frowns slightly before shifting his focus back to cheese cutting. Looking over, it looks like he's texting. The contents of said message being... Oh my god. Hey, Carl. Flynn looks over his shoulder, scrubbing at what looks like a cucumber. You got your outfit picked out for the interview on Saturday? Yup. Wait, what? Carl, you have a job interview? Yup. I find myself smiling a bit. Carl didn't tell me about this at all. I'm surprised he didn't mention it earlier. That's great. Where at? Carl stops typing, his lips pulling a bit tighter around the edges of his muzzle. One second, y'all. It is water time. It's in Peyton. Painting print design. It'd be like uh, printing copies and making people posters. Oh, the print shop by the mall? <clears throat> I know of it. What do they pay? Minimum wage. Not that it matters, though. Daxton looks slightly confused. I turn to him. Carl's parents are pretty well off. Flynn stops what he's doing, going to the fridge and taking out a box of strawberry popsicles. He drops it down on the counter beside Daxton. The salamander startling. The salamander startling some, looking to Flynn, then the box. Flynn points to the hen's ice cream label above a logo of, a we of the weather vane with a chicken on it. Carl's parents' company. <clears throat> Daxton lets out an astonished huff, looking for some sign of fib on Flynn's muzzle. No way! Way, I'm the ice cream boy! Daxton blinks, seeming to look at Carl in a new light. That's really cool! Carl looks off to the side, then back to Daxton. Glad you think so, I guess. Flynn takes the popsicles back to the freezer, returning to his station at the sink. Just make sure the clothes you got all fucking fit right. Can't remember the last time I saw you dressed up. It fits, dude. My parents dragged me to all sorts of black tie event stuff where I have to stand around and lie about my career goals. You haven't done that in ages. I went to the charity gala thing two years ago. You mean 20 pounds ago? Most of it's muscle. I'm not calling you fat, lord ass. I'm saying that when it comes time for the interview and you come in with a hoodie and cargo pants, they're gonna think you don't give a fuck. I mean, I kinda don't, you know? Oh, the fuck you don't? You really looking forward to disappointing the shit out of your folks again? They're used to it. Jesus fucking Christ. Dex and I exchange an awkward glance. I'm half tempted to follow Carl's lead and start pretend, te pretend texting. 
He worked at the right. He worked at the freight warehouse for years and were miserable. Can't blame me for not looking forward to the same sort of thing. <laughs> Carl feigns a raspy chuckle, though by the jittering of his hooves against the bar stool, it's apparent he's tense. And now I have my own house. I see his slitted gaze shift briefly to Daxon, who looks like he's concentrating very hard on cheese cutting. Mostly. And print design. That's basically working with all the same computer shit you do for your art crap. Seeming to note an opportunity to diffuse, Daxton chimes in. You're an artist, Carl? Shit, by like, the loosest definition of the term, I guess. Flynn just rubs his temple some, shifting his attention back to cooking. He places the freshly washed vegetables into a metal pot on the stove with one of those steamer lid things on top. What kind of art? You, uh, don't seem like the oil-based pastoral type. Carl blinks. I hear Flynn grunt deris deris derisively, the clicking of the stovetop audible as he turns the nozzle for the gas. His heavy tail flicks behind him, lightly, slightly slapping the floor. I realize he's trying to get my attention, his eyes meeting mine, then moving to Daxon and finally flicking to a textbook by the dishwasher. Art History 101, Historical Perspectives and Fundamentals. Glancing back, I think I see the corner of Flynn's mouth twitch up at me before he turns back around to his pot of veggies. It's still kind of weird seeing Flynn in, a, Flynn in a work outfit all the time. In high school, he was more of a jeans and jacket kind of guy. A southwestern rock of, rockabilly who didn't like rock and roll. His work slacks are pretty baggy and definitely hide the definition of his legs. Flynn's got a V-shaped physique through and through. Narrow calves but thicker thighs and a sizable rump. When he bends forward a little, I can see the outline of it all. A lewd side of my mind is starting to wonder if he's doing it on purpose. But why would he, after what he said this morning? Uh, pastorals. I'm not very good at backgrounds or anything. <laughs> Portraiture, then? That's very snazzy stuff, that. The salamander smiles at Carl, showing his rounded cheeks. Carl just looks at him, confused. Um, I decide now's a good time to interject and spare Carl from Daxon's entry-level college art class inquiries. Carl draws pop culture character stuff mainly, I think. I haven't really been, I haven't really checked out his portfolio profile in a while. Superheroes, comics, that sort of thing. It's really good stuff. It's not. He pauses, shifting his phone to his paws akin to, bro to, to rolling putty. Since superhero movies became really popular, everyone draws that stuff now. Most better than, most better than me. It's kind of a dead-end style, I guess. Can't make any money from anything I make. One second, y'all. It is water time. Okay. Carl sounds more like he's quoting something rather than stating an actual opinion. Daxon raises a brow, nodding in acknowledgement. There's a pause, the only sound of the bubbling of the bubbling of boiling water and Daxon's knife hitting the plastic cutting board. Well, not if you draw them with your clothes off. The salamander tries to put on his most innocent face. That lasts for about three seconds before breaking into a wry smile at Carl's groaning, the ram taking a long swig from his beer. He's grinning too now, though. Everyone online tells me that, but I don't know, man. Every time I try to draw Chaos Wolverine's tits, they just look like big-ass furry eyes stuck to her chest. Daxton laughs, and I find myself chittering a bit, too. You could try drawing guys instead of women if you're giving it, if women are giving you too much trouble. You like that, wouldn't you, Chase? I don't like superhero stuff that much. Well, I wouldn't judge you if you did, Carl. I've written a few awkward sex scenes in my day. You're a writer? That I am, at least trying to be. I I'm taking creative writing courses at Mesa to get better. Excuse me, the folks really wanted me to go into marketing like them, but I'm not really into it. That's lucky. I'm having to go into debt, so I'm not sure if I'm that lucky. Hopefully I have one of the books I'm working on sells well. Most people don't read these days. The salamander places the cut-up cheese upon slices of rye bread, then puts the bread on a cooking tray, sighing as he looks to Flynn. Not everyone can suffice off of coming home from work and staring at the wall for hours like you, Flynn. Some people like some degree of mental input, yeah? What? Flynn flicks the stovetop off, his eyes lulled and his, br and his brow ridge furrowed. Daxon passes him with a tray of rye and Havarti, sliding it in the oven. You call this shit you write mental input? Megillah stops what he's doing, squinting at Daxton. Did you defrost the Hav that Havarti, or did you seriously just spend the past 15 minutes cutting into a frozen block of cheese? The side of the house is like an oven with the, hab with the habistat running like it is. The cheese warmed up on its own after a, after a while at room temperature. Flynn throws up his hands, visibly exasperated. I wouldn't, it wouldn't have taken you 15 damn minutes to cut a few slices of cheese if you just defrosted it. Are you in a rush or something? What do you mean about him staring at the wall for hours? The salamander looks standoffish now, his arms crossed. The question seems to have been ignored. Might be. Daxton, what sort of stuff do you write? Surprisingly, Carl is the one to butt in this time. Daxton turns, getting out some plates. 
Um, mainly science fiction and fantasy. You know, at Astro. You know at Astro, right? Oh my god. Carl takes another drink of beer, rubbing his beard in thought. Sort of. I don't really watch it myself. It's that space exploration starship show from the 60s with the sexy aliens. Jackson snaps his fingers. Yes, that one! People draw a lot of porn to them. I'm aware. Anyway, I used to watch it a lot with my little brother growing up. I got into the whole peace in the cosmos through science thing, something fierce. The stories for each episode were based on real science. A salamander finishes setting off the plates, bumping his fists together and smiling a bit sheepishly. I'm taking a few physics and engineering courses at Mesa to try and better understand it all for, uh, at all for my own writing. Makes sense! I also really like the whole diplomacy part. The ultimate goal of all first contacts was peace and learning. You don't really see that much anymore. Yep. Like, this one episode from Season 6 of Frontier is a really good example of that, and it really inspires a lot about what I'm writing in my story. The phone vibrates in my pocket. A message from Leo. Hey, you're not at the motel. A sort of sinking feeling takes hold of my chest. I can feel Flynn looking at me from over the counter as I type my reply. With Carl, Daxton, and Flynn about to eat dinner. When I look up again, Daxton is still chatting away to Carl about the Ad Astra episode, but I'm not really paying attention anymore. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there, y'all. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.